Oh hi, I'm the heretic. Looking through the interwebs, I stumbled upon a video posted by David Pakman. I'm not too familiar with him, but he's probably not that bad. Though according to Wikipedia, he's a... Uh, uh, actually, I'm not going to say what he is. Because giving him a label prevents us from looking into what he's actually telling us. We can dive right in, but I want to keep using the counter-narrative format for my what would really happen if people stopped paying taxes video, where instead of playing clips and responding, I sum up their views to the best of my ability and offer my reply. In this case, the source material is a four-minute clip from Pac-Man's show, link in the description. So here's a question we should not have to ask, but it might be relevant in the not-too-distant future. Should we bring back the draft, or conscription, mandatory service, or however you call it? The basic idea is that the government requires you to do work for them in one capacity or another for a set period of time as a matter of law. The eponymous Pacman says he's not against mandatory national service of some kind. Now, just to be clear, mandatory national service doesn't necessarily mean military service. It could be service in some other government branch, cause, such as the Peace Corps, social service, or you can work for the VA if you really just hate veterans and want them to suffer. Either way, if such service were required by the government, Pac-Man would not be against it, but cautions that there is a history in the United States in regards to the draft, the anti-war movement during the Vietnam War more specifically. Between that and the possibility that it could further militarize the U.S. domestically, which is a bad thing for reasons Pac-Man doesn't get into, the program could very easily backfire and or generate significant backlash against it. In other countries, though, completely fine and dandy. Now, why does this matter? Well, the clip in question comes from May 2018, which, just a month ago, the U.S. conducted another pointless airstrike against the Syrian government, escalating tensions against Syria's ally, Russia, while at the same time, there was talk about war with North Korea. It's not a secret, but most people don't know about how understaffed the U.S. military is, which has been consistently unable to meet enlistment goals. Damn it! Even the dumbest teenagers in the dumbest town in the dumbest state know better than to join the army. While the U.S. doesn't have the draft now, it still requires male citizens to sign up for selective service, just in case. All the while, Trump is not only trying to expand the military, but create a new branch of it. Now, escalating international tensions were on the news at the time, but they may very well just be media sensationalism. Government grows using the problem-reaction-solution pattern of sensationalizing a problem in the media, people freaking out over it, and the government swooping in and solving everything in such a way that always seems to result in the state gaining more power. The part you need to worry about is the fact that whether they're whipping people up into a panic rightfully or wrongfully is completely irrelevant. Now, I have not seen any evidence that Russia, China, Syria, Iran, North Korea, or any international power is a threat. But either way, the government media complex is going to scare people into looking to government authoritarianism for a solution. The draft being a reasonable solution to a problem that can only be solved by millions of Americans or millions of Europeans in their respective country being volunteered into working for the Church of Statism, or more accurately, being coerced into labor involuntarily on behalf of bureaucrats. And you know it's involuntary labor. If it weren't involuntary, the draft wouldn't be necessary. Murray Rothbard said it best, and I'm paraphrasing here. The draft is a 100% tax on everything an individual could possibly produce for two years. And if you attempt to resist your involuntary servitude in an open-air military prison sentence, you face being murdered by your own government for desertion. Involuntary servitude, what does that sound like? Oh yeah, it's the definition of slavery. Pacman, I can give you the benefit of the doubt. You're probably a good guy. It probably hasn't occurred to you to think about this stuff. But if your ideology supports the draft, then there is something terribly wrong with your ideology's moral compass. 
Actually, I could argue that the draft is worse than slavery. At least slaves are kept alive by the interests of their masters, who want to maintain their labor value for as long as possible. Draftees are just thrown into the meat grinder of a pointless war a hundred billion miles away to be traumatized, maimed, and slaughtered in the service of the state. Even Roman gladiators, trained to fight and die for the amusement of the bloodthirsty masses of Rome to keep them distracted from the fact that their empire was collapsing around them, were kept alive for as long as possible. They were trained specifically for non-lethal show fights and reenacting battles. Roman gladiators were more like WWE wrestlers than actual fighters. And for those of you who think the definition of slavery is labor without pay, Roman gladiators were paid. Oh boy, were they paid. And even if that definition were accurate, you would have to argue that internships are a form of slavery as well. Slavery is involuntary servitude, and any government conscripting its citizens is engaged in a form of mass enslavement. Whether people are drafted into the military or another form of public service where combat cannot possibly be involved is irrelevant. No person supporting it cannot also claim to support the rights of individuals, as such things are mutually exclusive. I cannot own something without owning myself first. So to say that the government owns you is to create a double standard. Any nation which can command the labor of its citizens can decide what is to be produced and in what quantity, making it a tyrannical government. Even if an ethical argument can't convince you, there is still no practical reason whatsoever for a draft. The government agencies are notorious for waste, fraud, and abuse. Recently, the Pentagon in the U.S. failed its first ever audit, not being able to account for loss of trillions of dollars. Deputy Secretary of Defense Patrick Shanahan even admitted that they never expected to pass the audit. If a draft were to happen then the result would be millions of working-age men, or possibly women, being eliminated from the workforce completely, their productivity squandered for their two full years. Just try to guess what that does to an economy. Proponents of reinstating the draft will often state that it's people's patriotic duty to defend freedom for another generation by giving the same people who violate property rights consistently the manpower to achieve victory in military conflicts the draftees had no hand in initiating themselves. According to the priesthood of statism, it's your patriotic duty to help kill civilians overseas or you go into a rape cage. Can you imagine being so conceited that you believed you knew for certain what cause other people should fight and die for while being so cowardly that you weren't willing to fight for it too? Unfortunately, we don't have to imagine. If these causes were so important that the forcible enlistment of hundreds of thousands of people were truly necessary, then the politicians and bureaucrats should take up arms and fight themselves. David Pakman, if you think the draft is legitimate, then I hope you have the moral courage to shoot me yourself. Because I refuse. Questions, comments, critique? I apologize for the delay for this video. I've been playing Fallout 76 and I originally had a different script that I lost. Anyways, what do you think about the draft? Leave a comment below. Support me on Patreon. Like, share, and subscribe to become a heretic today.